talking because finally Miss McBirth is speaking the real truth of what she's really frustrated about. I've, I've been through hell. You, you never wanted to do it. You always had excuses for it's everything. Like a, it's like a process. You had it's not something for I could everything. just call and be like, a oh, I want to change his name. Look, look, look how I so, do Mr. Seven Pacheco, months. let me okay, understand this. Let me understand this. You say you, your intention. Seriously, because I was like, why would you He wouldn't tell me that. Miss Collier, after you. Hold on. Hold on. I had to be having sex or something. Quiet. I had to see why. No, I had nothing. Let's get some order. Ms. Terrell unveils that the dad's moniker is MIA on the birth certificate, hinting he might have been on a snack run or perhaps abducted by aliens at the crucial moment, which leaves everyone wondering if the baby might hail from a more interstellar lineage. This bombshell drops like a hot potato, sparking a fiery debate that turns the courtroom into a less than stellar episode of whose baby is it anyway? I'm, my son ain't said no lie like that. His name's not even on the birth lying. certificate. Stop lying. Okay. Whose name's on the birth certificate? Nobody's. Exactly, because it's because he went. No, be he was anybody. not there it when be, he was it born. Be That's baby. Exactly, I could put you, anybody on there, but I didn't. But you exactly. Put a number in that. Can you believe the turn of events? In a plot twist worthy of a daytime soap, Miss Jackson and spills the beans about a mystery man at the birth, backpedaling faster than a crab on roller skates from her previous tale of a girls-only birthing squad. The courtroom buzzes with whispers and side eyes as this twist adds a dollop of intrigue to the paternity pudding, serving up a dish of confusion with a side of raised eyebrows. But just when you thought it couldn't get any more bizarre, the story takes an even wilder turn. Was he there when you had the baby? No. It was another guy, that's why. There was nobody else there but my mom and my sister. Your mom is in Germany, so you, you said, when did these you... people come? My mom over here in the state. Hold on to your hats because this next part is a roller coaster. Just when you think it couldn't get more, Jerry Springer, a family member, jumps up, branding the courtroom ensemble, hookers, possibly mistaking the legal proceedings for a reality TV audition. The allegation that her son is a serial baby daddy contender adds a pinch of melodrama and a dash of absurdity, proving that family gatherings aren't dull if they're held in a courtroom. And if you thought that was jaw-dropping, the saga continues with with an even more surreal debate. Sick of all these little hookers trying to say my son is a daddy. Okay. I'm sick of it. I get babies it. dropped off here, dropped off there. I'm sick I'm not of it. it. But it, it's, what that does, baby is here's, not. Here's the, here's the thing that she it does. Is. Here's I'm the sorry. thing. That's a lie. Yes, no, that's a lie. Not. That's she, a lie. First of all, she's a liar because you just had a wild sex party that got shut down by the police station last week. Last week. No. You won't believe what's next. The great nose bridge debate takes center stage as family members squint and speculate, turning the courtroom into a bizarre anatomy class. Amidst claims that our family noses are unmistakable, the poor baby's schnoz becomes Exhibit A, proving that in the world of paternity disputes, it's all about the nose, apparently. But the drama doesn't stop there. Wait until you hear what's thrown into the mix next. He's a handsome guy. He's my son. But he's still, no matter what he do, he's still gonna be my son. When you look at this picture, it seems like your son is kissing the baby. It makes you want to throw up. It makes you want to throw up because Why? it's a lie. Why? For your son to be kissing an innocent child? The twists keep coming. Ms. Jackson's parenting gets more shade than a beach umbrella as accusations fly about her kid's rotating roster of daddies. It's like a dad of the month club, raising eyebrows and questions about whether she's just really into paternal diversity or setting up a bizarre social experiment. Just when you think you've seen it all, the emotional roller coaster takes another steep dive. We're looking at the bridge of the nose. Right. And you're saying none of those match. None of those he match. Has, all of his he doesn't look, look alike. nothing, nothing all, like my son. All his, all of his Not kids, they look, they look alike. His, his youngest two, his youngest daughter and his son, the people think that they're twins because they look identical. It was about a month ago, I was coming home from work and I heard her tell another guy who was out in, in the parking lot, she told him, she's, Cash, come on with daddy. Come on with daddy. I've she called. Call, I've heard him call the dudes daddy, though. Woo! I've heard him, uh -huh. I've heard him say that. The drama intensifies. Ms. McBirth, on the brink of a soap opera-worthy breakdown, laments her soap opera-worthy life, echoing the exhaustion of anyone who's ever sat through a family dinner that went sideways. Her exasperation is so palpable, you'd think she was auditioning for the role of exasperated woman in a telenovela, highlighting the universal appeal of just being fed up. But the curtain hasn't fallen yet. The finale promises to be a showstopper. Prepare for the grand finale. Judge Lake drops the mic with wisdom that could double as life advice from a wise but slightly sassy aunt, reminding everyone that it's the kid who matters most amidst the chaos. He got okay, hold, big on, one no, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop talking, because finally Miss McBirth is speaking the real truth of what she's really frustrated about. I've, I've been through hell. Every time I look around, it's a baby here, it's a baby there, and I'm the one stuck helping, got to feed them, take care of the clothes, and, and, and keep them while the mom and daddy either go to work or run the street. I'm glad I'm in this chair, because I get to see the big picture. The big picture of this is, she's not sick of the baby, she's sick of you. Because you running around here. No. no. You running around here, you having babies. She just said it. You are Elijah's father. No! 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 
Mr. Hendricks, with the drama turned up to 11, professes his undying love and eagerness to play peekaboo and change diapers, despite the looming shadow of the paternity test that threatens to cast him in a non-biological role. Amidst his poignant soliloquy, he humorously contemplates whether his future involves being the cool uncle instead of dad, underlining the tragicomic essence of his predicament. The tension rises as Mr. Hendricks, perhaps naively, plans a future family barbecue, all while wrestling with the fear that he might just be the guy who brings the potato salad. Oh, I that, love, was, that I love him, that I want to be there for him. I Before I go to jail, there. please keep in contact with me and all that type of things. And ways, I feel heartbroken. And then I was like, yeah, that's what started giving me more doubts. I think getting more doubts about the situation, you know, Mr. Hendricks here that is inside of me. You know, he started to, one day we no, went out. No, that's not true. And, <laughs> and, you know, he started telling me things about oh, that he's seen the ex-boyfriend, uh, you know, at the house or while at the time that me and her was talking. And that, for me, it broke my heart, you know, because I do love her. You know, I do want to be with her. And I do, Tess do come back saying that that is my son. You know what I'm saying? Because... Can you believe the intensity of that moment? Ms. Hendricks, amidst her pregnancy blues, feels the sting of isolation and battles rumors with the ferocity of a soap opera queen, highlighting the melodramatic whirlwind stirred by Mr. Hendricks's exit. As the family grapevine buzzes with gossip, Ms. Hendricks finds herself the star of a low-budget drama, pondering whether her next role will be the misunderstood heroine or the villain. When Mr. Hendricks steps into the birthing room, it's like a scene from a reality show where the stakes are high and the drama is higher, illustrating his emotional roller coaster amidst the family circus. But just when you think it can't get any more dramatic, hold on for the next scene. Part, you know, says rumor here, rumor there. No, Your Honor, there was a rumor when I was seven months pregnant. That's when it came from my own brother. He thought that he was possibly not the father, which was very depressing. He came to the hospital with me. I didn't see him since I was seven months into the. He was in a room with me. A family member of her says, hold "Oh, on. that's the mailman's baby." No. You know that for While me. While you were at the son? hospital? No, that's when we had a, a little a family gathering just when we thought we'd seen it all. The narrative thickens as the couple wades through a quagmire of hearsay and heartache, with their love story teetering on the edge of a tabloid-worthy plot twist. Their journey, rife with theatrical tension, could give reality TV stars a run for their monies, as they parse through a tangled web of he said, she said, under the unforgiving spotlight of suspicion. Mr. Hendrix's heartache over his ex's cameo in this saga adds a layer of irony as he navigates the blurred lines between past passion and present predicaments. But the drama doesn't stop here. The courtroom awaits with even more surprises. That her family member came and said- And light skin. Said, oh, that's the mailman's baby. My reaction when they said that, I was mad. I walked out, I didn't know what to do. And then an ex out there, whatever time it was, for him to say, oh, that's my son, I love him, I can't wait to see him. When I get out of jail, I wanna just get, keep in contact with you. The drama reaches new heights. As the courtroom turns into a stage for the family's dirty laundry, the drama unfolds with the intensity of a primetime legal thriller peppered with personal vendettas and tearful testimonies. Each witness adds a dash of spice to the narrative stew, creating a plot so intricate it could inspire a best-selling novel. Amidst the legal jargon and emotional outbursts, Mr. Hendricks fantasizes about a plot twist that would absolve all doubts, perhaps involving a long-lost identical twin or an alien abduction. And if you think this is the climax, the next chapter in the courtroom will have you on the edge of your seat. Her ex, the number to get in contact back and forth, all about the baby situation. For me, it really bothered me and it hurt me, you know what I'm saying? Because at one point, I felt like her mother was like a mother to me. You don't understand how I really feel though. Okay, I do understand how you feel, because, but maybe my you mom don't. didn't know. You don't. Like, this being my first baby, you don't even know how I feel though. He didn't even sign a birth certificate. When I got kicked out the hospital. You got kicked out she, the she, hospital she, she, she because ahead. you were being rude to me. I wasn't doing I nothing to you. Like when she was seven months you, pregnant, she came out and said, you might not be the be, the, be, the dad of baby Isaiah. And for her to say so that So that actually came out of your mouth? Her mouth. Ms. I, Hendricks? Yes. This is unlike anything we've seen before. The courtroom drama escalates to soap opera levels as brotherly bonds and allegiances are put through the ringer, revealing the paternity dispute's seismic impact on family ties. Testimonies from relatives not only shine a light on the family's deep divisions, but also bring out some unexpected comedic relief amidst the tension, underscoring the mix of drama and absurdity inherent in familial squabbles. The segment highlights the emotional whirlpool at the heart of the case, illustrating how the courtroom drama bleeds into Thanksgiving dinner debates and family group chats. And just when you think the saga is over, the finale brings a twist no one saw coming. The anticipation has been building to this moment. The judge's delivery of the paternity test results turns into a suspenseful, yet oddly humorous climax, as a technical glitch adds a moment of unexpected levity before the big reveal.
The baby, you know, got relieved from the hospital, whatever. I tried, when I got kicked out, I tried to sign the birth certificate. If you see, his name is Isaiah Hendricks, it's not I Isaiah Pacheco. He wasn't there. Me, but yeah, but every time I called you and I told you for us to How make an appointment, okay, you didn't want to do it. You always had excuses for everything. It's not something I could everything. just call and be like, oh, process, I want to change his name. Look, look, look how I can't do this. Let me this. Let me understand this. You say you your intention the day you were in the hospital was to sign that birth certificate. Yes. What happened that prevented you? You got thrown out? Yeah, I got kicked out. Because you all had a disagreement. Yeah, uh, like a little, to it was a petty disagreement quiet, though. It was, end up leaving and she, you she, kept going. she kicked me out. In the case of Hendrix v. Pacheco, Mr. Pacheco, you are his father. That's good, my nephew has a father, that's good. <laughs> Ms. Knight spins the yarn of her pregnancy saga with a flair that almost makes you forget the gravity of the situation. She jokes that her love life is so complicated, it could have its own reality show spinoff, keeping up with the paternity. As she recounts the flip-flopping affections and bewildering decisions, she wryly notes that even a seasoned soap opera scriptwriter couldn't have penned a more convoluted plot. When discussing how both potential dads reacted, she deadpans, at least nobody's on the run, yet turning a tense narrative into a cheeky cliffhanger. Yes. But you knew all the while, deep inside, that you had cheated on Mr. Davis with Mr. Bailey. Yes. And so, Mr. Davis passes away. At that point, do you tell someone about this secret? The only people who really knew was <coughs> Mr. Bailey's, some of his family members. No. So, Mr. Bailey, mm -hmm. you and your mom are here in court today. Yes, Your Honor. Do you remember hearing that she was pregnant with Jamari, an older child? No, I knew she was pregnant with Jamari. The hospital scene unfolds with Mr. Patterson donning the role of an overly eager, perhaps misguided, protagonist in the birthing saga. When the naming dispute arises, Ms. Knight humorously suggests that they compromise and name the baby Maybe Patterson, keeping their options open. She quips about starting a new trend in baby naming, keeping it ambiguous until all paternity doubts are cleared. Amid the high stakes of naming their newborn, she muses, well, at least we're not considering Baby McBabyface, lightening a tense moment with her wit. But hold on, the drama escalates in the next scene. When I first found out I was pregnant, I didn't have the guts to even tell Corey that I cheated because I was like, you know, I was in love with that man. So when I told Mr. Bailey, I told him second after I told Mr. Davis. And what Mr. Bailey said was, that's that's my baby. Thanks. Did you say that, Mr. Bailey? Did you say that's my baby? No, how am I gonna Excuse say that? Him not... and his cousin was saying that. Excuse me, him can I say something? How am I gonna say, say that's my baby? Because you know you I don't slept know. with me. Because you well, know yeah, you I slept with, with me. You, but that's not my baby. I... Is that Mr. Bailey's son? You said no, it's not. I don't know. That's why I'm here. Just when you thought it couldn't get more complicated, as the child grows, both Ms. Knight and Mr. Patterson harbor doubts about the child's paternity, with observations and comparisons made to Mr. Sigler. The family's dynamics are further explored, revealing a communal approach to raising the child despite the unresolved paternity. Their interactions hint at underlying tensions and the child's complex relationships with the adults in his life. Amidst this chaos, Aunt Betty, who's known for her nosy nature and wild conspiracy theories, suggests a family talent show to light in the mood, claiming it might even reveal the child's true lineage based on talent alone. After all, didn't Uncle Joe juggle oranges just like the little tyke? And you won't believe what comes next. Did you ever tell Mr. Davis's family that it was a possibility that he was not Jamari's biological father? Nobody know that, nobody. I uh, never had the guts enough to even, mm. you know what I mean? That's why I'm here today, honestly, because I kept that secret for so long. I was young, I didn't know how to say it. It would hurt, you know what I mean? He dead now. So he's saying he don't know if he could be the dad. Well, he told me Friday was, if both of these kids come out mine, I'm going to marry you. That jump getting on my nerves. Well, listen, I know you are upset, and I know this is hard, and I know this has been a lot of stress. In a twist no one saw coming, the court reveals the results of the paternity test, confirming Mr. Sigler as the biological father, which brings a mix of relief and heartache. Mr. Patterson expresses his emotional turmoil, but acknowledges the importance of the truth for the child's well-being. The reveal prompts a re-evaluation of familial bonds and legal responsibilities, emphasizing the need for honest and constructive future interactions. Meanwhile, the family dog, Whiskers, seems to accept Mr. Sigler with newfound respect, almost as if he understood the human drama, wagging his tail in what appeared to be a canine nod to paternity confirmation. The emotional roller coaster doesn't stop here. Prepare for the emotional fallout to hit its peak. Following the paternity revelation, there is a significant emotional response from all parties. So we got that out the way, but what we don't got out the way is Josiah being your son, and he's definitely your son. And like I said, you're gonna see today. You're yeah, gonna we'll see, see today. So, so 
Ms. Laws, just to be clear, you told him unequivocally that Josiah is his biological child. Yes, Your Honor. The question was about Jamar. Yes, Your Honor. Then in my mind, there's a question about Josiah. Yeah. And that doubt is probably fueled by the fact that Ms. Collier has testified to the fact that her brother said before his passing that I have another baby on the way. Right. I'm confused, too. <laughs> Seriously, because I was... So, why Ms. He Collier... Yeah, he wouldn't tell me that. I mean, Ms. Collier, he, after... He he had, hold on! To, hold on! Had to be having sex or something? Quiet! Had to see right Let's now. I have nothing Let's get some That's order. The biological father is Mr. Bailey. So, after all of the doubt, we now know Josiah is your son. Okay. How do you feel? Cool. I feel a lot better now. The story kicks off with Ms. Knox wanting a DNA test to show her ex, Mr. Bailey, that he's really the dad of their one-year-old boy, Cash. She's tired of him saying he's not the dad, thanks to his mom's meddling. And she's also asking him to cough up $3,180 for baby stuff. This is where the drama starts. Ms. Knox, you are seeking a DNA test to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Bailey, that he is the father of your one-year-old son, Cash. You claim the only reason he's denying your son is because of his meddling mother. Not only do you want to establish paternity, you are also suing for child-rearing expenses. Can you believe the turn of events? Grandma Bailey thinks Ms. Knox is after her son because he might become a famous dancer soon. She accuses Ms. Knox of wanting to get rich off their kid. This twist makes us wonder if Ms. Knox is really after the money or if there's more to the story. Just when you think you've seen it all, the next moment will leave you even more astonished. Miss Bailey, you claim your son is a famous dancer and is about to hit it big. Both of you claim Ms. Knox is pinning a baby on your son because she is after his fame and future fortune. Yes, Your Honor. Did that just escalate quickly, or what? Things heat up when Ms. Knox talks about how hard it's been paying for everything for cash all by herself. Tanya, that's Ms. Bailey, brushes her off, leading to a big fight in court. The judge has to step in and calm everyone down, showing just how messy and emotional this fight is. Stick around, because what comes next will surely catch your attention. Well, I pay for everything because no, he, didn't, he quit his job, and in he June of 2014, I asked him, when will he start to pay for something? And he said he will. I always July have. July 13, 2014, when it came, he didn't have anything. In the hospital with nothing. I paid for everything. Pay for everything? I you didn't have a job, so how were you gonna pay for it? Because you want... Okay, hold on. You didn't have a job. He got a job. Let's get some order. Hold on. Things are about to get even more interesting. Ms. Knox shows off her receipts, proving she spent $6,160 on cash. She says Mr. Bailey should help pay half. Mr. Bailey mentions he paid for cash's circumcision, trying to prove he's involved but also questioning if he's really the dad. This bit shows how complex and tricky their argument is. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more complicated, wait for what's coming. I haven't seen anything from it, uh, Mr. Bailey. So these are receipts for... A car seat. Walker. A stroller. Car seat. Swing. Baby expenses. They total $6,960. Yes, ma'am. Half of which is $3,480, yes, which you say he would be responsible for. Yes. You won't believe what happens next. Mr. Bailey starts doubting he's Cash's dad because of Ms. Knox's text with other guys and her social life. This gossip adds another layer of drama and makes us question who's telling the truth. The saga continues with an even more shocking revelation up ahead. What? What kind of tweet is this, Mr. Bailey? It's a joke because who, who does that? Like, what type of fun? I have two you, kids. You, you wrote I have it. two kids. No, did you tweet this? Yes, ma'am. I have two kids. What is it about? I mean, it's, it's me making a joke. Like, I have two kids. Like, who does that? Who keeps receipts? I don't keep receipts on my children. Like, I don't... You know what I'm saying? So, what? You're being sarcastic in this right, tweet? Right, right. Yeah, I, Look, I never... Mr. Bailey, I want to understand your doubt. Because you say you're at the hospital. You went through the pregnancy with her. Yes, ma'am. You signed the birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. So, when did you start doubting? This revelation is about to turn everything upside down. Ms. Bailey guesses Ms. Knox was already pregnant before she met her son, judging by her looks and what she posted online. This accusation throws in more doubt and suspicion about when Cash was really conceived. If you're intrigued by this, you won't want to miss what happens next. Pregnant when she met my son. And the reason why I say that because every time somebody went over there, she was under the cover. You don't, it's a shotgun house. It was my house. I left it to him. So when you walk in, you're in the living room in the room. The proper thing to do, little girl, is to get up and acknowledge your right, best who's ever... acknowledge you. Yeah, he wasn't even there. He not even like he... So, so hold on, Miss Bailey. I don't care if he don't like you. Don't even... Miss <laughs> Bailey, Miss <laughs> Bailey, uh, because I want to understand what you're saying. She was... You said <laughs> you believe she was I'm already pregnant. pregnant when she met my son, and the reason why I say that is because you own the social media, okay? 
Yana, he does what? not have a career. I don't know what career you're talking about, but he does not. He was Just when you think you've heard it all, they argue about taking a DNA test, which Mr. Bailey says he's asked for, but never got. Ms. Knox not letting Cash see his dad's family makes everything even more complicated, showing how hard it is for them to get along for Cash's sake. The next part will take this drama to a whole new level. So brace yourself. As the curtain falls on this chapter, let's see the DNA test results. If you give me a case of diapers, you can see Cash. Okay. Yana, and I still don't receive this stuff. And the reason why I don't give them to him because First off, their house is not even properly, it's not even a house. It's dirty, it's filthy, it's... it's you are not! You didn't... I still don't trust my child with you because you, you didn't lie. raise your own child, so I have I Please, have a problem you with You are a liar, girl! If you didn't raise my own kids, why would I let freely just give my child to you? It has been determined by this court, Mr. Bailey, you are Cash's father. <laughs> and you seem emotionless. How does that's it feel? I'm, I'm, that's my son. I'm going to uh, move forward with, you know, what I got to do as a father, and I'm not going to...